Well, like like I've said all week, first of all, I, I want to – I do, and I, this is not just talking. I want to thank Coach Krzyzewski and Duke University. Th this was incredible. I mean, it, th this is the highest of the highest level. And for our players, and the, the one of the keys tonight that we said is don't don't take anything for granted. And I thought in terms of a game, I thought with three minutes to go, it, it you know, we got a little, little, little lax in there. It's not, a, it's not a secret. We had been shut down and paused. We practiced, we had individuals Tuesday, practice Tuesday afternoon in Freedom Hall. We, we had an individual session with everybody on Wednesday morning and we practiced Wednesday afternoon we practiced 30 Thursday morning and because of being safer, which was putting our players first, we finished at noon and took an eight, eight hour and 40 minute bus ride over here last night. And if I told you going into the game that points in the paint were going to be 38, 30 Bellarm and that the free throw line was going to be even. Wow. Wow. But you got to give them credit because they go 13 out of 26 from the three-point line. Okay, Bellarmine do. You picked your poison. And like Brakefield goes four for four from the three. Well, we hadn't seen that in the first two games. So incredibly proud of our guys. I, I, I am. I, I'll tell you exactly what I said at the under four timeout. At the under four timeout, I, I told them how much I loved our team. The frustrating side of it is in teaching, when your students do what you teach, it is the most gratifying feeling in all of coaching and teaching. When they get away from what they're taught and they're not successful, it's frustrating. As high as you get and, and how emotional you get when they do exactly what you ask or what you teach, and then when you get away from that and it doesn't work, that's frustrating. But the effort, we left every ounce we had on that court tonight. That's not a happy locker room. That's not a happy locker room. And, and again, I, I'm a the credit to, to Coach Shesky. John Jackson, who's their associate AD for basketball. You know, Nolan Smith started this whole opportunity. Uh, Incredible. It's great for Bellarmine University, great for Bellarmine basketball, no doubt. And I publicly want to say thank you again. Go ahead, fire away, guys. Scotty, this is Kent with WHAS 11. Obviously, you guys start the game in a little bit of a hole, but just talk a little bit about what your what your kids showed you after they kind of got their, their feet and legs underneath them. Well, the first two media segments, Kent, as a coach, now, granted, I, I know we had the three days of, of preparation and a walk through today. It wouldn't have made a difference if we had six months. It was impossible to simulate their physicality, their athleticism, in taking and, uh, and denying us what we wanted to run. But at the under 12 on, our players adjusting to their overplaying and their heating us up offensively was, was tremendous. You know, we, you know, we come in here at halftime. What's it? It's a 10-point game. And in the last two minutes, we miss three free throws and give up a three on a tap out. If you go back and watch the film, we miss free, three free throws and they get a tap out three where it's a five-point game at halftime. So we adjusted tremendously. Hey, Coach, this is Gary Graves from AP. Um, I guess you know, you were just talking about your team's poise, you know, just like overcoming the the, the start. I mean, what was it like for them to be in a place like that um, and and kind of play the way that they did, um, despite you know Duke's experience and everything else? Well, the great thing is they are so appreciative, Gary. They are so appreciative. Now, let me ask you this, Gary, and I, I'm going to go flip the this, this sides here. I'll interview you. What do you think when we walked in here for 1130 walkthrough, what do you think's the first thing? We got here about 10 after 11. What's the first thing that happened? 
probably looked around and, and thought, wow, this is Cameron Indoor. They couldn't get those phones out of their pocket fast enough to start <laughs> taking pictures. And we let them have their time. Hey, they, they earned it. They have earned it. And I, 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 but, you know, again, it's, it's one of the most iconic places in all of college basketball. It's Cameron Indoor Stadium. Mike Krzyzewski, hey, they do a tremendous job. The banners they have are all inspiring. I mean, they've got them. You look up there, one end is Coach K as the winningest coach of all times. On the other end, you look at national championship. On one side, you see pros. On the other side, all Americans, you see uh, conference championships. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's first class, no doubt. Scotty, now that you've had – this is under your belt. Obviously, it's a quick turnaround, and you, you got another game coming up. But with all the emotion and the expectation of this game, now, how do you get it back into drive and kind of get on back with, uh, you know, regular life in Division One, whatever that is? Yeah, regular being the key word there. Eric, we've already – we started talking about hired in the locker room. We'll practice at 10 in the morning here. We'll go back to the hotel shower. We'll head straight up to D.C. And, you know, nothing, nothing changes. You've got to go play possession by possession. And that's what is having a program is about. We were not over here for just respectability. Now, let me ask you this. Let's say we did not play this game today. And Scott Davenport, Bo Braden, Doug Davenport, Al Davis, we're having practice. You tell me we could simulate what we just went through for 40 minutes of live action. Well, smart people will take advantage of every opportunity. We've got to take advantage of this learning situation we had today, and that will be our goal. Yeah, and you probably knew what kind of opening punch Duke was going to throw coming off a loss. Uh, the players yeah, might have known, but you they hadn't seen anything like it. Uh, no. But you knew it was coming. Yes. And we talked about it. Hey, one thing you, you can ask all our players. I, I don't sugarcoat. I tell our players the truth. And we knew we watched the game together Tuesday night and, and you know, we knew that was a, 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 a national stage and they got off to a great start and, and, and Michigan State carried it and did a great job. So when they when, when Duke got off to a great start tonight, you know what was going on in their locker room at halftime. Hey, we got off to a great start against Michigan State too. And that didn't get us anything. Yeah. And give them credit. They responded. Give them credit. Hey, Scotty, this is this is Gary Graves again from, from the AP. Um, I, I guess you know, you, you know, you talk about character, you know, building from you know from from facing teams like this. Um, I guess when you with the games that you lost because of you know COVID and scheduling and everything, um, did you feel like like maybe was there a concern that maybe that lack of action would would kind of set you back, um, you know, coming into a place like Duke, especially you know having such a big big challenge? Well, I think it's no different than anyone in college basketball not having the exhibition, not being allowed to scrimmage, et cetera. Then we had to pause, and and you know that is difficult. They had two games under their belt. Yeah, that that is difficult. But but I'm gonna be fair. We played eight guys tonight. Seven of them are returning players. So, I mean, the, you know, that, that part is to our credit. And Sam DeVault learned a lot. Let me say this. You know, we were missing. We have one captain on our team, C.J. Fleming, and we didn't have him tonight. And to give you a little inside basketball, I asked C.J. this morning if he wanted to talk to the team, like through a Zoom or, uh, you know, a face-to-face. And uh, he said, no, coach, I'd rather do it privately because the kid was absolutely devastated. I mean, he, we have called him on the hour. And, and you know, that is what it is. And, and to show you the class of Duke University, I walked on the court and Coach Krzyzewski asked me about CJ because he said in watching film, he loved it. How about that? So you know my first call is going to CJ. 
You know, everybody says in this day and age, hell, I got your back. We told our players, have CJ's back, his front, and both sides. That's what I want.